Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 23, and today's node is the Feather Template SOP. This is a SOP level geometry node, so we can go ahead and drop a Feather Template, just like this, and it'll drop three nodes for us. The first node is a curve, and it actually contains three curves. If we just set our background to dark, we'll be able to see it more clearly. As you can see, we have these three curves. These three curves are then fed into a feather shape organize, and this just puts them into some groups and adds some attributes to them. This is then fed into the template, and those three curves generate this shape. If we make adjustments to this actual curve over here, you'll see that it adjusts the feather over here. For example, we can make changes to this shaft shape over here. We can make changes to these bezier curves. And just like that, we have control over the shape of our feather. As for the actual feather template from shape node, this just has some basic settings for the shaft. So this is going to be the width at either end of the shaft, and this is going to be along the curve. So you can see that we can adjust either end of it. Over here, we have settings for the barbs. The barbs are just these ones which stem off of the main center part, and we can adjust the density of that for a higher resolution feather or decrease it like this. So to quickly understand what's happening here, let's just enable our points. And if we take a look over here, you'll see that we only have nine points. So how is it generating this geometry with only nine points? Well, if we take a look at these, each and every one of them actually has a bunch of position attributes saved on them. If we take a look over here, we can see P under barb L, that's all of the positions for the left barb and all of the positions for the right barb. You'll see that it's a 12 float. All this is, and if I decrease the barb segments, it'll become more obvious, is the position of the center point and then the position of the end point of the barb. So if we take a look at it now, it's a three float, which represents the position at the center, and then another three float, which represents the position at the end. As we add barb segments, that number is going to go up. So at eight, we should have 27, because yeah, 27 floats. It's eight times three floats, plus the center one, that's an extra three, so that's 27. All this means for us is that this is extremely efficient, but it's also something to keep in mind because we may want to realize this as actual curves at a later point. This changes the way that we work with this, but for now, I just want to show you that you do have the option to use the feather uncondense, and this will just turn it into curves, right? Just like that. We're not gonna do that right now, but that is just something to be aware of. Okay, so I'm going to increase the barb density over here and show you some other useful nodes for working with this. Firstly, we have the second input of the feather shape organize. And if we drop another curve node, this is for the profile curves. So if we go over here, we can draw in our own curves. And what this will do is it'll actually separate our curves using this profile. So this gives us some control over the shaping of our curve. For example, at the base over here, you may want to have a different shape because feathers tend to be rougher towards the base, right? So we just end up with something like that. Additionally, we also have the feather clump tool, which is useful for generating those sorts of shapes as well. You can adjust the frequency and you also have options for the amount and fall off and split depth. Then another useful one is the feather noise. So we can go over here, just add a feather noise. This is going to add this three-dimensional noise to our feather. So it's going to move it in every axis. So as you can see, we end up with something like that. So how do we actually use this feather for anything? Well, one of the ways is to actually use some of our hair tools. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop a sphere over here. We can use the hair gen tools, hair generate, plug the sphere in over here and just generate all of these curves as we've done before. We can increase the length of these. And then there's a very useful node that we can use, which is the feather template interpolate. So if we go over here, the first input is going to take our guides and the second input is going to take the skin. And the final input is going to take our feather input. You'll see that it throws us an error and that's because the lookup method by default is weight arrays. We won't be using weight arrays in this video. It's a bit more of an invested setup. So we're just going to set this to group and this will use all of the feathers coming in from the final input. You'll see that it just arranges them all on the surface, just like that. But the orientation of these feathers should be derived from the orientation of our actual shape. So all we have to use is a guide tangent space. Plug this in over here. You'll see that it takes the guides and the skin, and then we take that and put it into our feather template. Over here, you won't see anything. We can disable normal and tangent. What we actually want is this orient over here. So each of our feathers actually generates a barb orient value. But when we copy it to each of these curves, we need to update this. So over here, we're going to change this orient value to barb orient. All this will do is orient each and every one of our feathers. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase the length over here so that we end up with longer feathers, right? So we just have this over here. Now this isn't great for rendering or anything really. So what we can do is take these curves over here and use all of the tools that we've used before for hair gen. So we can use a process. So those are going to be your guide processes. 
So we can just put this in over here. You'll see how this blows all of our feathers in that direction. You can adjust the value and the lift amount. We can also use things like a hair clump. So a hair clump over here. We can do something like a frizz and then bring our feathers in. We also still have other options. For example, we can use our guide groom. And I would recommend using the guide groom first before you actually plug it into your feathers. The reason I say this is that if you make any changes to the actual feather that comes in, you're going to have to redo any changes that you made with your guide groom. The guide groom is a cached node, and so you'll have to clear it and re-input every time you make a change. So I prefer to put it before the template, but sometimes you may need it after, but just do keep that in mind. So we can make some brush changes over here, and there we're starting to get an interesting result. You can also use many of these processes afterwards, so perhaps just a lift, and that's how we would go about generating these feathers. If the feathers that are coming in are too high resolution, you can use a feather resample. It's a really useful node for just adjusting the resolution. So as you see, when we enable this resample shaft, we end up with less high resolution feathers. Additionally, on the actual feather template interpolate, you will find that there are some settings over here for matching resolutions or for setting a custom resolution. As you can see, we have a resolution multiplier, which can also go over a value of one. Right, something like that. Finally, I want to look at this lookup method once more. This is going to be useful for when we have multiple types of feathers. So I'm just going to go over here and duplicate this over so that we have two types of feathers. On the left, we have this feather over here. And so I'm just going to make some changes to this one. Additionally, you can also use the guide process tools over here on the feathers. So we have these two unique feathers over here. But now we want to use both of them inside of our feather template interpolate. So how would we do that? Well, if we take a look at each of these feathers, they actually have a name attribute on the actual primitive. Over here, you can see that this one is feather zero. But the issue is that this one is also feather zero. That's because it's generated by this feather shape organized at the top over here. So all we have to do is add a name attribute at the end and just rename them to something else, right? So this one can be feather zero and this one can be feather one. Then we just merge those together, plug that into our feather interpolate and we won't have any changes yet. This is still just using group. So it's just going to take the first thing that it finds. What we need over here is an attribute. You can see if we change this to match by name attribute, it's now looking for a template name. So it's looking for an attribute that's on the incoming curve that matches an attribute that's on these feathers over here. So all we have to do is use an attribute wrangle, set it to primitive, and on here we say s at template name equals, and then let's just try feather zero, that's feather zero, and then we change it to feather one, and it switches to feather one. The great thing about this is that you can just do some very easy randomization and things. So if rand at primnum greater than 0.5, so 50% chance for feather one, else two feather zero, just like that. And now it'll randomly assign one of these two feathers. Okay, so once we've got that and we're happy with our feathers and we want to render them out, there are some steps that we need to take because remember these aren't just curves that we can render. Unless we were to use a feather uncondense, then these would just be treated as regular curves. But because we're not doing that, there's some special steps that we need to take. So I'm just gonna use a null over here. I'm gonna call this feathers out. Also just going to give this a name attribute over here. This is going to make it easier for us when we're at the Solaris level. We can just call this groom curves, right? So these are groom curves and we're outputting them. So let's go to the stage level right over here. So first thing we're gonna do is just sub import. Go ahead and grab our feathers and you'll see that they just come in as curves. Once again, if you can't see this, press D, background, dark, and now you can see that we have these curves. But these aren't what we want. So how do we get this to render as feathers? Let's just switch this to the Solaris desktop. Okay, so this sub import over here brings in our groom curves. You can see it right over there. Let's just rename this to feathers. And so now we have feathers with groom curves inside. What we're going to use is a feather procedural, so Houdini feather procedural, Plug this in over here. What we're going to do is just take the parent primitive, so this feathers, drag it into the procedural prim over there. As for the curves, we're taking this groom curves and putting it into the groom rest. This over here will set it up to be visualized in our viewport. Now, all we have to do is use a Houdini preview procedurals, plug this in, give it a moment, and there we have our feathers, right? So now they're showing in our viewport. And these are curves, so we're going to be rendering them as hair. So let's just go ahead and drop a material library, dive inside, comma, material builder, rename this to feathers, go ahead and drop a comma hair node, plug that into the surface, go up a level, auto full materials, assign to geometry, assign it to our feathers, and then let's just add a comma physical sky and a camera, and then let's go ahead and render it and see what we have. So as you can see, we now have our feathers rendering. Now, if you want these feathers to appear softer or anything, you can go over here to your feathers, and a really nice node to use is just the feather width node. 
So we plug feather width over here, and this just allows us to control both the shaft and barb width. So if we want soft feathers, we would decrease the barb width, decrease the shaft width, go over to stage, and you'll see that we have much softer, finer feathers. We also have all of the settings over here under the Karma hair. Melanin is going to once again change the darkness of the feathers by increasing the amount of pigment in them. We have a base color, instead of base color, just like that. We also have options for specular shifting. We have settings for the roughness, as well as settings for making this diffuse. So as you can see, we're now rendering these all as feathers. If you'd like to go through this and take a look at all of these steps, you will be able to download this file down below. The other thing that I've included is just this random thing that I definitely spent way too much time on, and it's, um, yeah. The great thing about this one is that it's just got a bunch of masks on it. So if we were to use a hair gen, just use a hair generate, it's already got the masks built in. So if we override our density over here with a skin attribute, we could choose, say, the body mask. That'll mask just the body, wings, muzzle, eyebrows, tail, legs. So this is a fun one to work with just because everything is set up for you. So you can set up different types of feathers and merge them all together and just render it out. So just a weird little bird thing. Feel free to download it down below. So that's all for this video. I hope that this helped you understand feathers a little bit better. They are quite complicated. There's a lot that goes into it and there's a bunch of other use cases. This is just showing you basically how to use the feather template from Shape as well as the feather template interpolate. So I'll be seeing you tomorrow with the crowd motion parts up. Until then.